step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to me King of all days so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all full of sick became poor. Here I Welcome to our online service this Sunday the 7th of May. It's wonderful to be with you, that you can join us online. My name's Chris, I'm the vicar of the church in Wortley and Farnley. I hope you are enjoying the middle of your bank holiday weekend. Uh, did you watch the coronation? Did you see King Charles get crowned by the Archbishop of Canterbury in Westminster Abbey yesterday? Well, it was a splendid occasion, I thought. Justin did very well. Uh, he's been practicing and praying a lot, I hear, according to reports. Um, it was a truly wonderful event, uh, showcasing the majesty and the beauty of what it means to serve the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. This morning, we continue with our series on asking the big questions, and we'll be exploring how can I have faith? How can I have faith? But we do as we always do. We have our acclamations and then our first hymn. Alleluia. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And our first hymn this morning is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise thy mountain fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Here I raise my Ebenezer Hither by thy help come And I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to arrive at home Jesus sought me when a stranger Wandering from the fold of God He to rescue me from danger in support his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a fetter. Bind my longing heart to Thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for Thy courts above. One of my favourite hymns there, reminding us of the fount of all blessing is God, that everything good we have comes from God himself to us. And reminding us how easily we do stray, yet how good God is to us when we come back. We come now to pray our confession, to say sorry for the ways in which we've uh, walked away, in the ways our hearts have shifted from God, our wandering hearts. And so we ask God's forgiveness. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you life eternal. Amen. We now have our Bible reading, which is from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 to 47, and is read by David. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armour on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around, because he was not used to them. 
I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and, with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield-bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, David, for reading that quite long reading. Well, we're answering the question, how can I have faith? One of the questions that came up in our big questions, uh, little survey of what people in the church were asking. What does it mean to have faith? How can I trust? Um, I feel like I don't believe. What, how, can I, how can I have faith? And in our passage this morning, we have the story of David defeating Goliath. David was uh, one of uh, the sons. He was the smallest son. He was the youngest son. He was not expected to be much, um, but he, he has been chosen to be king. He has been anointed to be king once Samuel dies, uh, but he's not there yet. He's still a young lad. He's still a teenager, and all his brothers are out fighting this battle against the Philistines, um, but David's at home with his dad, uh, tending the sheep. David was a farmer, uh, a shepherd. Uh, he's tending the sheep and he, uh, he ends up going to the front lines because he's bringing his brother some food and some clothes and he stays. But his brothers uh, aren't supposed to be letting him fight. But David says, go on, let me, let me fight. Um, I'll do it. David, the, the next anointed king, says to Saul, the current king, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. David is convinced that he can beat this giant. Uh, Goliath was supposed to be a huge man, um, more than twice the height of a normal man, uh, a, a massive person, um, a giant. But David is convinced that he can win. David is convinced that he can beat Goliath. Saul says to David, once David has said, let me go and fight him. You're not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a young man and he has been a warrior from youth. Saul saying, Goliath, he knows what he's doing. He's a lean, mean killing machine. He's been fighting since he was young. And you yourself, you're young. You're just young. You've not been fighting. Goliath is experienced. He knows what he's doing. He's trained. You have no idea how to fight how to um, have a sword fight. Saul has no faith in David, whereas David has complete faith that he can win. But you see, David's faith isn't in David's ability. David doesn't think David can do it. Instead, David thinks that with God's strength, he can do it. David argues back with Saul. It's quite a big thing to argue back with a king. Um, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came, I went after it and killed it, rescued the sheep and killed it. Uh, I have fought lions or bears. Your servant has killed the lion and the bear. 
This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. David trusts God's rescue. David attributes his victories over the lion and the bear and his soon-to-be victory over Goliath as the Lord's. It's God who has rescued him from the lion and the bear and God will rescue him from the Philistine. God will cause him to beat Goliath, the Philistine. And I think our first lesson here is uh, from David, that when we begin to think, how can I have faith? How can I have faith? I wish I had the faith that could defeat, like David's, that would uh, help me to defeat Goliath, whatever the Goliath is in your life. The reality of the situation is we've all had small victories with God. We've all had moments where our faith has been slightly, slightly stretched and God has come through because God is faithful. We've all had, uh, there might be times in our life where we've prayed for something and something and God has answered it and it might be small. But those are the stepping stones and the building blocks to remind ourselves of what God has done for us when we want to step out for him. David remembers the Lord delivering him from the bear and the lion. And so he trusts that God will deliver him from the hand of Goliath. We remember what God has done for us. We remember the victories that God has already won for us. The story continues. Saul dresses David in armour and gives him a huge sword and a bronze helmet. The problem is David's a young boy and Saul is a man. And so the armour doesn't fit properly. And David feels a bit silly and says, I can't wear these because I'm not used to them. So he took them off and he takes in his hand his staff and five smooth stones from the stream and takes his sling. You see, this is the normal stuff that David uses to defend the sheep. This is what he's practised with. This is where he is. He feels comfortable. He feels safe. This is where he knows he can do it. He doesn't take the armour. He doesn't try to be someone else. He tries to be himself. And I think here's the second lesson. You have your own faith. You have your own way of engaging with God. Don't try to have somebody else's faith. Don't try to um, pretend to be someone else with their expression of faith and their way of having faith. Be the way that God has created you to be with all your strengths and weaknesses. And God will meet you in that. He will use that. He will use the five smooth stones that you have, whatever they might be, to defeat Goliath, to build your faith, to rescue you. The story goes on and as we all know, David defeats Goliath with a single stone to the forehead. The Lord rescues David. The Lord delivers the Philistines over to the Israelites and there is victory. David trusted God. David had faith in God. But for David, faith was spelt R-I-S-K, risk. Because the way that we build faith is by doing smaller things that build up to bigger things. It's the same way that you grow muscle. You lift weights that you can lift and you progressively overload the weight, the weight that you're lifting. It's called progressive overload, where you add a little bit more weight onto what you're lifting. That's how we build our faith muscle. We build it by using it and we build it by stepping out a little bit further. So start where you're at. Start with what you can pray for, but build up to slightly bigger things till eventually you're praying these huge, bold, out, day, audacious prayers, asking God for incredible things. Because faith is only faith if it feels like it is you can't do it. If you could do it, then it's not faith. It's just trusting in your own self. It's knowing what you can do. And so our faith is built when we chase after those big, hairy, audacious prayers, where we have huge prayers that we're asking God for that we could never do. Maybe it's prayers for your people in your family or your friends you would love to come to know Jesus, but any mention of God or of church just gets shut down immediately. Pray, pray, have a big, hairy, audacious prayer that they would come to faith. Maybe it's the finances of the church. We need several hundred thousand pounds to be able to reorder the church. We've got a little bit of money, but we need some more. Why not pray 
a big, hairy, audacious prayer that we would find and raise that money to reorder the church so that it might be beautiful and fit for generations to come. Maybe, <coughs> maybe you have something in your life where you don't think, where you don't know how it's going to change, where you don't see a way forwards. Whatever that is, a Goliath in front of you. Come before God in prayer, asking him in prayer, and your faith will be built. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. We pray for strength to follow Jesus. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. Jesus said, whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. Jesus said, unless you change and become humble like little children, you can never enter the kingdom of heaven. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. Jesus said, happy are the humble. They will receive what God has promised. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. Jesus said, be merciful as your Father is merciful. Love your enemies and do good to them. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. Jesus said, love one another as I love you. There is no greater love than this, to lay down your life for your friends. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. Jesus said, go to people everywhere and make them my disciples, and I will bid you all, be with you always to the end of time. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. God of mercy, you know us and love us, and hear our prayer. Keep us in the eternal fellowship of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And we join all our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so our notice is, well, this evening we've got our coronation quiz uh, and a pie and peas evening. There might be a few tickets still available. So if you just show up on the door and try your luck, we'll see if we can find some pork pies to feed you. Tickets are four quid, pay on the door, six till eight in the church hall this evening. Uh, bring your own non-soft drinks if you would so like. Uh, looking a little bit further ahead, next Saturday on the 13th of May, we've got Messy Church, which should be great fun as always. Do spread the word. If you've got small people who would enjoy crafts, Bible stories and songs, then do send them down. Uh, and if you can help lead a table, then we'd love to get you involved with that as well. Uh, looking a little bit further ahead, our um, 
art exhibition is happening uh, at the end of uh, May. So if you're an artist, please do submit your works. You can find all the information on our Facebook page. We'd love to show your works in our exhibit. And then our summer fair is happening on the 8th of July. So do start finding things for the raffle and the tombola, bring them to church and drop them off. We've got our final song now, which is What a Beautiful Name. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our Sunday service. Do join us next week as we'll be back as usual at 10 o'clock for our online service or 9 and 10.30 on site. For now, though, let me pronounce the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Turn his face towards you, shine his countenance upon you, give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>